So let's. We know that you were you were married twice. Once uh, to Ryan Glover, who was the father, Kyle's father, right? Mm -hmm. And then you you later remarried to Usher Raymond, who we all know. You know the funny story that I never really told anybody because who do you tell these stories to? Right. Me and you yeah. were me and you me and you were at Puffy's house watching the Grammys. Please and please make sitting, it be known there was a lot of people there. It wasn't a <laughs> no there, there was a whole there was a house full of people. Yeah, it wasn't there. that kind of party. Okay, there's a house full of people there. Okay, and I was sitting here and you were kind of off in the back with the girls doing whatever and whoever you were with, and um and there were so many people everywhere. But then. Usher walked in and sat right next to me and I had just read him for filth on one of my shows. And I was like, oh my God, this is going to go Oh left. my goodness. What? Don't be reading my baby daddy for filth. That's what you got to stop. No, no, but it just, it'd be things be happening on my show, you know, but anyway, he was such a gentleman. He was such a nice person, but it was really good to see you all be able to coexist in an environment where I didn't really see you guys interacting, but it wasn't like, oh, you know, throw her out, you know? I'd have been like, how, I was here first. You leave. <laughs> how are you able to coexist now um, before the book? Because I'm sure with the book being out, there's probably some energy around some of the stuff that you said. But what what do you how how are you guys able to coexist and move forward? Because there was the there was the marriage, there was the public attacks you used to get for your age difference. There was the rumored uh, breakdown with his mom, where she didn't like you, or you didn't like her, or something like that. And then there was the divorce, and then there was the Oprah interview where I thought he was he was being a little messy, um, and I thought I thought Oprah was being messy. Let um, me tell you, I write about that in my book. Oh God, I talk about it in my book. I talk about it. Um, he and I are definitely cordial, and we co-parent very well. Um, are we friends? I'd say no. Um, I'd like for us to be friends. I miss my friend. He was my best friend before he was anything else. Um, that's my homie. We cool. Like he's a stylish guy and he's very current. I'd like to bounce things off him. Like, yeah, well, I'm about to, what do you think about this? Should I put this out? Or, you know, or, Hey, read my book. It's amazing. What do you think? Because the book is not about him. And I don't want, you know, your viewers or anybody to be misled that I sat and wrote 18 chapters about a man. Ain't no man that good. I mean, shoot, I don't know. There's nobody that can write 18 chapters about. That's like a write a whole sonnet about a man. No, I wrote, you know, he's in the book because he's part of my story. My story is very, I have a very vast story. I mean, I was a person that worked in fashion for many years. I, you know, how I started, I'm from Oakland. That alone is a book. <laughs> Being from Oakland is yeah. a book in itself. So um, I didn't want to bore people with all my Oakland stuff, but he's not even until the middle of the book. You know what I mean? Cause that's where he chronologically came into my life. So, but yeah, so in terms of our relationship, we're cool. Definitely like, Hey, how you doing? What's up with the boys? We talk about the kids, but I do miss my friend. I miss my homeboy. I do miss my friend. And so we're not friends, I would say anymore. Well, I think the reason why people are interested in that part of your relation, your, your life, and it isn't to, it isn't to just to take away from the rest of it and say mm -hmm. that it's not equally important. You've been a very private person. Right. We've heard from him with uh, with Oprah. We've heard from him speak on it. He never said your name, but he ain't got to say your name. Um, I think Oprah said your name, so we all who knew who he was talking about. Okay, I, so my I my thing is, I loved her so much. I was so sad about that. Yeah. Why? I grew up an avid Oprah fan. I wanted to be like her. She was a person that I really, I aspired to have my own talk show because I have so much, uh, I'm so opinionated about so many different topics. And I think I'm well-versed on a lot of different topics. And I just, I used to see her and just be like, that's my stepmama, Oprah. That was my girl, Ofri Winfrey, little Ofri. My grandma used to call her Ofri. I watch Ofri every day. So when I saw the interview, the thing that disappointed me most, as with all of her interviews, I think she interviews the most huge celebrity. The underdog never gets a voice. We never get to say what our version of events were. And I think there's a lot of viewers that would be interested in hearing the truth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just think so. Do you feel like Oprah was more focused on getting the interview with Usher Raymond and less on getting the truth about Usher's relationship with Tamika? I can't say. 
I still love her. I still love Lady O. I love her, but I was very disappointed um, that I never got the like flip side of it to like, hey, let's let's interview the underdogs. What happened to them? You know, and what's their version of events? So the book Here I Stand that has the double meaning doesn't have everything to do with Usher, but we are here at that chapter, so I got to ask you some questions. All right, so you were you you were his stylist. Then y'all were hanging out in your book. You talk about how you guys were talking. And then although you weren't like officially all in locked down with a ring on it, you were you were advanced enough to where you want to know where the was at. And you pulled up one day and the was in his lap. That's what you said. That's what I the did. book said. My, it is. It's there. It's there. It happened. It happened. Yes. Because people would watch you right now being calm and speaking about being a mother and so poised and put together and lady, oh, when really you rolled up and was like, bitch, get up out of here. And you snatched a stripper out of Usher Raymond's I didn't snap no damn <laughs> Yeah, I'm putting two on the ten. I definitely didn't snatch no damn you, Tamika, you're from East Oakland. You did not walk in and say, please leave. I, I, I have the potential to snatch some wigs. However, I did not on that day. Well, maybe I did, but I didn't touch a girl. I was mad at him. The anger was directed in the right direction. You got to read the book. I mean, you, I'm not saying you, but I mean, I, I want your viewers to actually order and read the book because I think they will be pleasantly surprised about how things really went and my position on things. And there's some funny stories in there, actually. That's one of the funny stories. And that was before I got married. So let I will say that for the record. That was prior to marriage. That's an old story. It was before you got married, but clearly it was at a time where you felt that you were in enough to be able to control. This is what you said. You said his mother, mama, the one that didn't like you uh, reportedly, I don't know. She threw a party for him for his birthday um, at Capitol Grill and you were invited. And you said you went there and there were some, um, there were five tables. There were 10 guests each. You talked about an environment where there were a lot of people there and you were able to flirt with him and get to know him. So clearly at that point, you were invited by him, not mama. So somebody liked you. He liked you. She liked you. She did like me at one point. She liked me. She, we used to eat dinner and hang out. We were cool, actually. Uh, we were we were cool. I think once she realized that you know he had you know serious feelings for me, I think something happened. It went down the tizzles. So the dinner was cute. You guys are sitting at the top. By the way, I love Capitol Grill. They have like some really good fish. You guys are at Capitol Grill, and then here you are vibing. He's over with Nanny and the grandma and the mom and everybody, the family. They're all chilling. Everybody's great. You're invited. You probably were in the nice dress. I gotta find that one page in the book. See, now you're making people think I really set up talking about him. That's just one story. No, no, no. You know, everybody that follows me knows I'm messy. They know I'm here to do the mess, okay? I, there was a whole book, and the whole book is great. This don't even happen to like later, like halfway in the middle of the book. Wait. So you know I was getting to it. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm okay. kidding about her grandma and them. I'm kidding about her grandma. No, no, we're gonna go back to that because I think family is important. But I just want to get to this since we we're talking important. about marriage. Okay. So then at 2 a.m. you go to the house, you're calling the phone, he ain't answering. You like, uh-uh, I'm coming over. You pop up in your sequence outfit, whatever you were wearing. I had on sweats, no, I had sweats and lots of Vaseline on, actually. <laughs> no, it was different. I wasn't dressed <laughs> up, there wasn't no elegance going on. <laughs> I had a whole t-shirt and some goddamn new balances. Ready. The reason why I ready for war. But the reason why I say all that is because when you pulled up, even though you weren't the wife, you pulled up enough to get your man. Is it was it to get your man? Like, do you think that's why he fell in love with you? Because of how assertive and you know, because every girl who ain't the girl don't do that. I think entertainers have so many yes people around them. You know, all your, all your people around you pretty much are like, yes, oh, boy, that's hot. That's, oh, that's amazing. You tight. Ooh, you fresh. Ooh, them clean. I think you got so many of those people that it's rare to have the person that's going to come in and be like, that shit whack. That's whack. Like, that's not hot. So I think I kind of served as that person, like, kind of no filter. I um I say things what I feel. I say them with my chest. And, um. You know, and I think he appreciate that. That's rare. But um, what was the thing that, what was the thing he would have to tell me? Was it the, was Tamika, I'm about, okay, you know, you're my oh friend, but you're on the show. 
Oh. Was it the head game? Was it the head game? Oh, was, it the hand, was it the hand job in the car on the way to the concert, girl? What was it that made him fall something? Because you being a little tight lipped, and I want. I'm, I'm sick. I, I was, what are you talking this way? <laughs> no, I don't know. I can't do that one. I don't know nothing about it. And then if I tell you, I got to kill you. You know what I'm saying? I can't give away my. <laughs> said, what Kevin Samuel said. Nobody marries a high value man. An older woman can't get a high value man. Well, I married two. But so now what we gonna do? What's next, Kevin? <laughs> All right. So so why do you think that why why did you think that your age was such a topic when men do it all the time? And did it really bother you? The age difference. The age didn't bother me. It was the it was the you know what bothered me the most in the whole entire thing, I would say that it was black girls that I would say look like me. You know what I'm saying? People who my same demographic or my same background or might even go to my same school. They weren't supportive. You know what I mean? Most of the negative comments, if you look at the, you know, the more urban blogs and things like that, that's black girls. And you look at the demographic of those blogs. These are girls between the ages of, you know, 25 and probably now 50, you know, who were, oh, she's ugly. She's this. She got kids. She, they, meanwhile, they're sitting over there feeding damn Cheerios to their baby on the side. You know what I mean? Like, you got kids too. You should be happy for me. And like, I was all, I've always been pleasant. And like, I've read reports like, oh, she didn't like the fans and she wouldn't. I'm like, what? I'm the one that's no matter where we were, would be like, you got to sign that. She might not never see you again. I still will do that to him. If we're somewhere and some fans are acting crazy, I'll be like, I know. I know. He'll, sometimes he'll say I'm with my family or whatever. I say, no, she might not see you again. Or she's from Germany or, you know, I'm on the fan side. So mm -hmm. long as it's clear, I'm the ally of the fans. And I think it was mistaken that I was like being mean and I didn't, I don't know. But more importantly, the black girls hate it. Any Caucasian women, any Latina women, any... Was that because they wanted him or because they fantasized over him? Or is it because they wanted to see him with some Elle magazine model or something or another Probably celebrity? Probably a little of both, I would imagine. Um, I wrote the fantasy for them from what their picture of what they saw. They didn't know that he had like a very clean person with a, you know, kept a good house and, you know, knew how to take care of kids and knew how to do the things that a man like him needed. They didn't assess that stuff. I'm not the party girl. I'm not going to have the cutout leggings on and the orange wig and all that, but I know how to do what I do. So you had this beautiful wedding schedule. I remember, I remember this. Now I didn't know you then, but when I tell you, I wanted to kick his ass for you. You had a beautiful wedding plan all the people ready to go, dress, done, fitting, probably did the bridesmaid thing with the little bachelorette party, all of that. And then the day before he calls off the wedding because of rumors of your age. And then you didn't get married, and but then you, you later went and married him anyway. When you look over all that, one, two questions. One, did you not want to kick his ass the day before your wedding? And then two, how dare you marry him after the fact? I loved him, so I would have married him, yes. I, I loved him a lot. So, yeah, I went ahead and married him. We all do stupid stuff for love, right? I wasn't mm -hmm. stupid, though. I don't have any regrets. All of the things that have happened, all my experiences have shaped me into uh, who I am. Like, even, the, you know, the boyfriends and the relationships prior to him and after him, they all shape me into my personality. They all give me funny stories. They give me, they've given me memories. Um, I don't have any like regrets about anybody I've ever been with. I just don't. I think everybody has been solid in because at the time they were solid and they're probably solid now. I don't have any <laughs> former crackheads or anything as boyfriends. <laughs> I did well with I my selections. I, I think I got one in my book. That title was uh, "Toxic Ass." <laughs> I think he was on meth. But were you not embarrassed though when the wedding didn't go forward oh, the first my time? God, of course, it was so embarrassing. It was a bad moment. It was definitely a bad moment. But see, I don't want you giving all the juicy stuff away. Not all of it. But yeah, you got to a few. Not all, just a, just a, this is a little bit to bait them. I'm not I'm giving not, all the details. Who else? Okay, Who else you, didn't say, well, you didn't say anything. But let me ask you, let me just ask you. The, the reason why I say okay. is because I don't really feel like you've given the audience an opportunity to get to know who you are. 
you and how you felt as a woman, right? When you talk okay, about these women I will say this. Up, in closing. Wait, wait, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say this. Right, let me say this and set it up. All the women that don't have sympathy for you don't know you. They know Usher. And what I'm saying to you is that every woman should be able to connect for, and hopefully they read this book, Here I Stand, to get to it, right? Every woman should be able to empathize with another woman who is taking public scrutiny, taking attacks, taking it on the chin, left and right, and still standing there for her man, gets left at the altar, embarrassed in front of the world, and still comes back to marry the man. I, I feel like there's a reason for women to love you for that. I, I agree. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't think this is about the love of the women because the people that are hate, listen, there's a very fine line between love and hate. So anyone that says that they hate you, that's a lot of energy. It takes a lot of energy to decide that you hate me especially when you, you haven't met me or you haven't been around me. So the opposite of love is indifference. So if you don't, if you don't care anything about me and if you just, you think I'm nobody and blah, 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 then, then maybe you don't like me. But if you have enough energy to decide that you hate me and you've never met me, you've never hung out with me, you know, we never kicked it. How can you say you hate somebody you really don't know them? 